friends. I think as uh, Neha has already presented to you very candidly and with the visuals which hardly require any reiteration. But to sum it up, I would say that this has been a tradition which was introduced by the Modi government in 2014 to present our account periodically. We were doing so even in the earlier five-year term, every year, every quarterly. And since this happens to be the completion of the 100 day of the second term, it was decided by the government of India to hold press briefings in the same format across the country. And frankly speaking, I was expected to be amongst you yesterday, but we've been traveling for the last one week and we were in Guwahati till last evening. So it was to happen today. To sum up from what he presented, I think the biggest, the greatest achievement of the 100 days is the abrogation of Article 37. And this is an achievement which I would put it in my own way, is an achievement in 100 days which would be recorded as an achievement of 100 years. You had governments, governments came, governments went, but a temporary provision of the constitution lingered on and waited for Prime Minister Modi to take over the reins of the country before it could be done with it. It required a tremendous amount of willpower, conviction, determination. And I think that itself is evident from the manner it has been carried forward. And it carries a lot of meaning when we say this or discuss this sitting in Jammu. Because I think more than anywhere else in the country, it is a citizen of Jammu and Kashmir and a person living here who would actually realize the value of the abrogation of Article 370. I said so in Guwahati yesterday as well. Because the kind of discrimination or the kind of not getting an equitable involvement in the country's development journey, which led to a kind of an isolation, not only at the physical level, but also at the mental and psychological level, has been realized in full measure by those living here, particularly the common man, the average man. And therefore, I think, the value of this and the appreciation of this would be recorded much more. 67 years ago, it was in the same region, incidentally, my own constituency, the Shama Prasad Mukherjee, got arrested on the 11th of May 1953. And while he was being arrested, he told his secretary, the young follower, Adal Bihari Vajpai, go and tell the old. The Shama Masar Mukherjee has entered human history without God, even though as a prisoner. And I said so in the House of Parliament, on the floor of Parliament, that if Mukherjee was alive today, he would have said, go and tell the world, Modi and Amit Shah had appropriated Article 370. So in a way, it is a redemption of the pledge that we made to Shama Masar Mukherjee and three generations led this struggle forward and sacrificed themselves at the altar of this struggle. I said, I have already said so, but what I did not say that day, and I think it's unfeeling to say today, is that the Jammu and Kashmir and Attah becoming an absolutely integrated territory of Jammu of India. I think it's also an occasion to recall another redemption of an observation made by Mukherjee. Somewhere in early 1953, around the month of January or February, during a debate in Lok Sabha, Mukherjee had raised serious concerns about certain observations made by Sheikh Abdullah around that time. And when the then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru was trying to respond to it, not in a very straightforward manner, Mukherjee had retorted back saying, 
मिस्टर प्राइम मिनिस्टर जस्ट आंसर मी इन सिंगल सेंटेंस वेदर ए कश्मीरी इज अ कश्मीरी फर्स्ट और एन इंडियन फर्स्ट और एन इंडियन फर्स्ट और कश्मीरी फर्स्ट और ए कश्मीरी फर्स्ट और कश्मीरी सेकेंड एंड कश्मीरी थर्ड This is on the record of the parliament, though it's not often recorded. But I think today that moment has come that we can rededicate ourselves. That each one of us, each one of the 130 crore Indians, is an Indian first, and then anything else. After the Bharan Bani episode in parliament during a debate process, that history would judge. Whether on on the subject of Kashmir, because I never call it the issue. It was Mukherjee who was right, or Nehru who was right, and I think that moment of judgment has arrived. The world view has come round to India's approach. Some of those countries, some of the host nations of the world, which were hitherto reluctant to accept India's view point, are now coming round to India's view point. And I have the courage to say so because I've been saying so all over the country. I was in Kerala just four days back. That the common man in the streets of Kashmir is rejoicing, and he would realize the rejoicing of more when the benefits start arriving. It's only a handful of those who were the beneficiaries of this mayhem which carried on for years together and which benefited generation after generation. And therefore. I think the biggest achievement of the hundred days is something which is going to be recorded for hundred years. We can discuss this later if you so desire, but I have to touch upon some of the other salient features made by Neha. As she was referring to the determination, I think the determination, the resolve of the Modi government is evident from the fact that within 24 hours after being sworn in. On the evening of 30th May, in the very first cabinet meeting, the decision was taken to extend the benefits of the farmers in the PM Kisan Yojana across the board to every farmer. I don't know how seriously it has been recorded because the media also has the habit of only indulging in breaking news. But if you kindly go back and study, such announcements are made usually on the eve of election. Here was a government which was making this election, which waited for the election to happen, which waited for the results to come, and then within 24 hours made this announcement. Because we were not looking to dole out promises or free deeds on the eve of election, as had been the practice by the earlier governments and the earlier political parties. And that is itself a reiteration of the conviction with which this government is working. Not for the old man, but for a longer interest and large interest. Triple Talaq is another decision, which also I would request you to go deep and study. Very few governments would have the will to go about it. Each government, whichever the ruling party, tends to play it safe. It is this government which has the courage to bend the cat. Unlawful activity that has a special significance for Jammu and Kashmir, and particularly in the context of abrogation of Article 370 and reorganization of this territory to Union territories, I'm sure the media friends who are expected to be more learned will be able to explain to the people the benefits. Suppose tomorrow the then government refuses to extend the unlawful activities act to the territory of Jammu and Kashmir, what would happen? So I think what we have to realize to all, everything cannot be said in public domain is that every decision taken by the Modi government has been after deep consideration, including the decision to declare it as a union territory, which of course the Home Secretary, Home Minister has time and again reiterated that it would be again turned into or restored back as a state at the appropriate time. The question which is often asked by the media friends is what is the appropriate time? So somebody asked me the other day in Delhi and I said, 
it will be less than 72 years. If the earlier governments have taken 72 years to erase a temporary provision, we are not going to take 72 years to restore unit territory back to the state. And the other question which is often haunting the minds of our media friends is how long this uh, house has. And my single sentence is promise is less than 18 months. Because the agencies are privy to every sequence of events and we better leave it to their wisdom. There has been also a very futuristic approach on the part of the government. As they mentioned, the constitution of the first ever Ministry of Jan Shakti because the world is going to, conflict, to confront with issues related to water. Both the scarcity of portable water and also the availability of drinking water. We don't realize this because we live in the moment that we live, but this is going to happen and the whole world is going to face it in spite of the fact that the largest reservoir of water is beneath the surface of the earth. And it was the vision of Prime Minister Modi that he thought it befitting to start work on this before other nations could actually embark on this. Chandrayaan, she has mentioned incidentally, I happen to be associated with the Department of Space and I think the Chandrayaan mission has in a way heralded India's ascent to top. India's ascent to top and the position of supremacy in the immunity of world nations is imminent in the next few years. And this process has begun through the medium of space. And I personally feel gratified that I happen to be associated with the department at this time. She referred to the redundant laws being repeat. Incidentally, that is also one of the departments that is associated with me, the Department of Personal and Training. I hope you would appreciate every government or every ruler takes pride in the calling of Here is a government which has the confidence of taking pride that we did away with 1500 problems, which have become obsolete with the passage of time. Many of them have been done in the last 100 years, 100 days. But we began this process soon after 2014, within three months of the government having taken over. We did away with a rule of getting the certificates attested by the gasted officer. That was a dubious legacy of the British Empire. The media person had then raised certain queries and generally so, what if? somebody fudges a certificate through this provision of self-certification. And I have said at that time that if he does so, the responsibility would lie with his parents, his educationists. Then he is not who has failed, we have failed in educating him. And here is a government which has the confidence to trust the youth of this country. And we have to do so when more than 70 percent population is below the age of 40. There are a number of other provisions, other new initiatives taken for the elder citizens as well, like pension allowance, like digital life certificate, number of other provisions for the armed forces, particularly I think this is the government which has given a high priority, though we began with ORP, but even in the last hundred days, provision has been made for a pension even from the surviving families of the Second World War. For the leadership of Prime Minister Modi, we have stretched it as far as possible so that we could ensure maximum benefit to the armed forces and their kith and kin. Northeast team was here, it's just concluded its four day visit. And the manner in which in five years Northeast has undergone a revolutionary task of mission which was being recorded even by the Home Minister during his address yesterday is to be seen to be believed because otherwise you can't believe it. There were at least three states which had never seen a train, including our Machal Pradesh. Today you have Shatabdi journey over that. And one of the main objectives of 
sending this team over here is that there are a number of success stories in the last five years of Northeast which can be replicated in Jammu and Kashmir. And why I am mentioning this during the briefing of 100 days is that one of the major decisions, because we have been successfully taking one or the other initiative as far as Northeast is concerned every fortnight. And in the last 100 days, one major decision was to start the first ever bamboo park of India in a district called the Divine Assam. And I'm sure many of these initiatives can be replicated because of the similarities of topography, similarities of geography, and also to an extent climatic conditions. We hope after this presentation, we will be able to carry forward the message to those who refuse to be convinced, though in the heart of hearts they may be convinced. Because we have a genre of Raj Gurus who will never be convinced. But it is the 130 crore people of this country whom Prime Minister Modi is looking forward to develop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your remarks. <coughs>